Welcome back to another episode of Be Our Guest here on Musical Theater Radio. I am your host, as always, Jean-Paul Yovanov. It is time once again for you, the listener, to, to discover a new musical. Save the Girl is a 1980s rock rap musical comedy that is getting its world premiere stage reading on October 3rd in New York City. And we are joined today by one half of the writing team to tell us a little bit about the show and the event on the 3rd. Let's welcome to the program, Lee Man. Lee, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Jean-Paul? I'm good. That's fantastic. First of all, before we get into anything, congratulations on getting the reading up. And we'll talk more about that. But Thank you. Awesome. We're very excited. Very excited. Right. So before we get into that, I always want the listeners to get to know you a little bit more because, you know, the person that's creating it, you know, they find that in their work. So if we get to know you, sure. we'll know the sure. work a little bit. So okay. we want the 30 second bio of Lee. Okay. Who is Lee in 30 seconds? OK, I'm Lee Mann and I'm a singer songwriter from New York, originally from Maryland, came to New York from Maryland and uh, trying to do my rock and roll dream. And I wrote the music and lyrics and co-wrote the book for Save the Girl with Dan Guzman, who's not here today, but he's a very experienced Broadway actor, writer, producer, and he's originally from Detroit. And he actually has a, a film on Amazon called First Comes Like, so check that out. That's from Dan Guzman. And um, he had come up with the original idea for the show, and we had kind of lost touch, and we've known each other since the mid-80s from New York when he lived here. Now he's in LA, but um, he came up with the idea and had a draft and was looking through his cassette tapes. And there was an old demo of mine from the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we have the cassette in the logo. It's like, we want to remember people to remember what's that. The kids will be like, what's that? <laughs> that's how we used to play music. And uh, he remembered how much he liked that music and thought that it might fit with his concept. So he got in touch with me on MySpace, and we were probably the last two people on MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> and I still have my account somewhere. I know. So, <laughs> yeah, and uh, and because we had lost each other's phone numbers, so I think I got married, and you know, when you get married, you move somewhere, and you take your husband's name, and then we can find you. So that's where the internet is great for that. And uh, so I looked at it and said, "Yeah, this looks like fun." And so we started kicking stuff around, and. Before you know it, um, we have a show, <laughs> you know, a few years, take a few years, but um, we kicked it back and forth. And I, I actually didn't know at that time, I was not very hip to all the uh, computer stuff you can do for me with music. Mm -hmm. So I, but I recognized right away, I'm going to need some real specific songs. You know, we can use some of the more general songs for certain things. If I adapt the lyrics to a, a character or to a situation, mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to need some new things. And so I learned garage band. Hey, all you garage band people. <laughs> <laughs> and I started writing new stuff. And, uh, you know, at the time, I had really never uh, previously thought about writing for musical theater. I was mainly trying to do, um, you know, trying, this is like 30 years ago now, <laughs> trying to do um, my gigs at CBGB's and the bitter end and with my spandex and my big hair and my young self <laughs> and uh, loud guitars and all that stuff. So some of that, you will hear it in the music. Um, but there are actually a lot of new, new songs that are still in the 80s style because we wanted to keep it cohesive, um, but definitely have more of the uh, musical theater vibe of more story, more specific story in them. Right. So um, that's something that I learned along the way that, you know, as people do <laughs> when you're learning how to write a musical. And I learned from Dan and other people and different writer groups, Zoom writer groups, you know, and round tables and you go and you talk to people and you say, what do you think of this? Well, it needs a little more story, you know, okay. <laughs> well, so, uh, well, I was going to say, speaking of story, tell us the synopsis of the show. Okay. Well, it's an 80s rock rap, wacky musical comedy with kind of a feel of grease in the 80s with a touch of kinky boots and the producers on the side. So, you know, that kind of fun spirit. 
Um, there's romance, a pair of feuding brothers, some quirky friends we can all relate to, and a rapping biker gang with ambitions of their own. So um, our main character is a newly famous rock diva, Annie Angel, who returns to her hometown for a concert. And after some introductory scenes that show the town and connect the relationships and motivations of the friends and our star, we join Annie's concert at the Encore for her hit song, Summer Love, which is one of the songs that you will hear um, later. And toward the end of the song, Annie disappears, resulting in her friends misjudging the event and thinking that they need to form a rescue party to save the girl. So, um, the cast of the old town characters includes Annie's best friend Katie, her brother Will, Katie's brother Will, who was actually Annie's ex boyfriend, uh, a new girl in town who has a sparkle in her eye for Katie. And we get to know, and Smokey, the wisecracking bartender, because you got to have a wisecracking bartender. <laughs> in every town, you got the diner and the bartender. And Katie's the diner, mm -hmm. Smokey's the bartender, and those are two of the main places where things happen. And uh, we get to know them all through the story, their motivations, their character, and their dreams. They're, and um, after the concert is interrupted at the encore, we, the audience, sees that Annie's been escorted via a motorcycle to the Beats Gang's hangout by their charismatic leader, Diesel. And Annie thinks she's gone to the official after party because there's always an after party, right? So uh, she thinks that Diesel is her surprise biker escort because her manager, Dickie, previously said, I'm going to have a surprise for you later. And he knows she loves motorcycles. So when a motorcycle is at your service, she's like, yeah, okay, <laughs> you know, let's go to the after party. So then she finds herself at the Beats Gang hangout and they're, a, they're into the hip hop sound. And this is mid 80s, so hip hop is just really starting to come up and really starting to become part of the musical, uh, you know, genre of pop, you know, coming coming into the world, as as we say, mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, really coming into its own. Yeah. And so Diesel does this whole prank, really, because he wants to get Annie to listen to his songs. And so he's like, hey, you want to hear some of our beats? That's how we named the, the, the bar. And that's how we named the gang, because we're big into beats, you know, drum and bass and beats and all that. And she's like, yeah, OK, fine. So then we hear the beats, which is uh, sort of there. We are the Jets, but it's not the Jets. It's the beats. <laughs> and they rap. They don't sing. But there's a little singing in the in the song, too. So uh, that's the introduction to the gang and to Diesel, who's their leader and the main um, I guess antagonist because he's the one who pulled the prank mm -hmm. and later we'll find out, you know, why he felt pushed to do this. And actually you do see a little bit of hint of that at the beginning. So you get an idea of what he's going to do. So then she's like having fun, learning new dance moves. And uh, he's like, Hey, you want to jam with us? She's like, great. So the beats is kind of very guy centric. And then Annie sings Barbie doll, which is, the girl answer. Don't treat me like no Barbie doll. Mm -hmm. Don't do me like Barbie. Don't treat me like Barbie doll. And uh, there's a little rap section in that one too. And it's very funky. And, you know, part of my sub story is the influence that hip hop had on rock and pop as well. So at the beginning, the songs are pretty much boom, 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 boom. And then after the beats, you start to hear the boom, boom, boom. So that by the end, fill my heart uh, after all the conflicts have been resolved and we're talking about love and opening our heart to each other and uh, trying to get along and work with each other to make the, the world a better place. Um, you, you feel the coming together of the two that, you know, hip hop is influencing rock and pop. Mm -hmm everybody's influencing each other you know so why not have open hearts and open minds to each other to see you know what good things can come of new things new sounds new thoughts new people new ideas it's part of a sort of a sub undercurrent to the hilarity <laughs> which is 
uh, you know, the characters and and the uh, the conversations and some of that of that stuff. So nice. What do you think? Very cool. So when did you start writing this? When did the the impetus? I know you you mentioned that Dan found your your cassette, but I, so how long ago was that? And how's that journey been? That has been well. He's in LA and I'm here. So it's been a little slower, I think, because we're not in the same place. Yep. Um, and I'm say I would say around 2010 is when we started getting a little bit more serious about it, and we have been through many many drafts, of course, as as one does, mm -hmm. and throwing new tried new songs, tried old songs, took them out, put them in, took them out, put them in, and uh, you know different we cut a character because we're like wow we have maybe too many people <laughs> you know? yeah. like oh how many people can we put on the stage i don't know <laughs> <laughs> let me look at some of the things that are on broadway right now um and you know everything's from it could be four people it could be 24 people you just don't know so yeah. um you know we went through different uh iterations where we decided to condense a few people take out one or two um, some of the characters uh, gradually got more depth to them mm -hmm. as people. Um, we could see that they had other skills and things about them that maybe were surprising. You know, it was like, hey, what if she could do this or what if he could do that? You know, and so it it just like really grew as it went. And then, of course, you get to a point where like, wow. This is like four hours long. <laughs> you know? Are we going for like a Wagnerian ring cycle? Yeah. You know? Maybe we need to like focus it a little and go choo, 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 chop a few things out. <laughs> so that you know that that's kind of how it went. I think it grew, and then we started like condensing and focusing a little bit more. And a few years back, we had entered it into the New York Musical Theater Festival, mm -hmm. which, you know, it's a few years back because it has been gone for a couple of years. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. and um, and it was slightly earlier iteration, but main the main characters, the main stuff was there. And they usually would do 10 shows and they let us know. They said, well, we have an 11th spot if you want it, hmm. but we're just going to give you the theater. We won't give you anything else. No other help. And we're like, well, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe we need a little more help, help than that, or a little more time to yeah. put together some kind of a strategy of dealing with it. Cause we weren't just quite, we just weren't ready, but that gave us, I think that gave us a little bit more of a push that, Hey, you know, they think you could be the 11th one, you know, out of hundreds probably mm -hmm. or thousands of entries, you know, maybe we should get a little bit more serious and push it a little bit more. And, um, and then I, I was having problems with like the new songs were easy because I created them on the computer, you know, with loops or beats or, um, you know, little MIDI stuff that I would do with a little keyboard. Yeah. Um, but we had the issue of some of the older songs that all I had was old demos and I was trying to like take my vocal off and, you know, do all sorts of little techie things. And then the pandemic hit. And my husband, uh, Pete Sawchuk, is an excellent guitar player, musician, MIDI. He can play anything and singer as well. And uh, so we're sitting here going, um, all right, no gigs. Let's redo the old songs. So we spent most of the pandemic putting new tracks for the old songs, which is great because now they're really clean and you can change the key yeah. for different singers, which I already did one. <laughs> so I'm, I know it works. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you know? And uh, that was what we ended up doing for our pandemic time where, you know, it was a way to make something positive out of really frightening time for everybody. It's like, hey, let's focus on this. And we have like, you know, eight songs or something to do. And let's get those done. And so we worked on them. We did them. We re-sang them. We then, then uh, he started getting back to work. And I realized, uh, like, I'm on all the girl songs, but we have three girls. So let me get some other voices yeah. on. 
And so, you know, so because, you know, a producer needs a little help to understand that this is a different voice than this voice, you For know. Sure. We don't want all of them. As I remember Lynn manuel Miranda saying, yeah, when he first did his demos for, for Hamilton or, or in the Heights, they were all him. And he's like, okay, let me get him to somebody else on these. And it really does help you to sort of hear the characters a little bit more. So then uh, I, I got some other voices. And then when I felt like I was finished was like the, the end of uh, maybe the middle of last year, like June-ish, 21. We were pretty much done all but maybe smoothing out some mixes. And uh, and then I got some help with that, too. And so we got to a point where we're like, OK, everything sounds good. Let's start sending it out, you know, and um, sent out to a few different contests, a few different festivals. And when the Emerging Artist uh, Theater came back with a yes, we we're like, yes! you know? <laughs> <laughs> all right. They like us. Let's go. And what? you know, then that's that's another shock. It's like, oh, uh, now we gotta do it. <laughs> you know. So it's it, you know, it's exciting, it's exhilarating, and a little terrifying as well. <laughs> because, you know, we don't know how it's gonna go. But. Well, tell us a little bit about the 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 production that's going to go on on the third. You know who's who's in it, some of the names, and, and that sort of thing. Okay. Um. Well, let me get my notes up on that so I don't mess up anybody's name. Yeah, you don't want to do that, especially the people singing your stuff. You don't, don't want, want to do that. To do that. <laughs> don't want to do that. Oh, I have too many notes open on my desktop right now. Yeah, I've been there, okay, done there that. There we go. Here we go. All right. We have uh, Annie Angel is going to be played by Bly Voth. And then we have Smokey, the bartender, is going to be Johnny Hawkins. And our Mr. B, who's the retired professor and the um, person who knows all knowledge. He's the knower of all knowledge. He's the trivia expert who pipes up with little tidbits of uh, interesting historical facts at the most interesting times. And that is played by J.C. Montgomery, who also is the Sultan in Aladdin. Oh. So we're super happy to have him on board. And also his son is playing Tank, Diesel's sidekick in the gang, and Boombox, the town uh, dancer and music man who carries around his boombox. Now, we're not going to actually have the boombox there, but we we have a narrator telling you what's going on because it's a stage reading yes we don't really it's only one shot we didn't really uh have the capability to do all the um, blocking and staging and all that so it's the first step and hopefully many steps into something else and then uh for katie we have um so tank is marcus montgomery katie is ali ray uh diesel is tim Ware hill and Anita Sanchez is Sedona Valdez. The narrator, Anne Sanford, doubling up is Erica Eric Levitin. And Will Carter, the, the boyfriend and Katie's brother, is Zach Herman. And uh, An Angie and Alice, she's playing two roles. And uh, the Andy understudy is Maggie Durego. And right now we're just short one smaller part, <laughs> Dickie. <laughs> so we don't have him today, but probably have him by next week because we have a couple people we're talking to. Nice. So uh, I think that's everybody. Captain Winston, Eugene Berryhill. And uh, I think I said everybody now. Right. And so that's our cast. And several have done uh big national tours and broadway shows and of course jc's right on broadway now and everybody go see him in aladdin because he's awesome <laughs> we are super happy to have him uh working with us for the third and um the the voices excellent um of course we've already rehearsed and you know yeah. it's coming along great and very happy and very excited about it and uh i think it's it's a little something new because there aren't that many 80s shows. Whenever you say 80s, people say like Rock of Ages. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yes, Rock of Ages was great. But this is all original music. 
some of it written in the 80s in the 80s style and, and different original um, stories. So I think there's plenty of room for more stories from the 80s, don't you think? For sure. For sure. So tell us a little bit about the, the who, what, where, why and about the event. So how, how do people find out more about it? OK, you can go to um, Emerging Artists Theater dot org i believe it is and let me get that thing up here and it is what 15 west 28th street in manhattan it is uh second floor and there's uh elevators to get up up there it is a 95 seat theater called the tada theater and the emerging artist group um rents it from tada so for a month, it'll be all these new, um, new things. Every night, new things. Some nights it'll be uh, four or five, ten-minute shows, ten-minute plays. Mm -hmm. Some nights it might be a, a dance thing for an hour and then a one act. Um, every night's going to be different, and I think that's very exciting, don't you? For sure. That just see that there's like, as a matter of fact, last year was three weeks, and this year. I guess because a lot of people were riding over the pandemic. <laughs> we weren't the only ones. Um, they they expanded it to a month. Wow. So it's a whole month from uh, this coming week to um, the end of October. And every night you, you can see something at that theater. So go to the emerging artist theater dot org online. And um, also you can go to brown paper tickets dot com. Mm -hmm. backslash event backslash five five four four six three zero and that's that will get you tickets to save the girl for five dollars off from if you buy them at the door so oh you could actually save five bucks by going to the brown paper tickets look for save the girl or event five five four four six three zero, and save yourself five bucks and come out and see something brand new That'd be fantastic. And we'll put that on our, our social media to make sure people get that in case they didn't write it all down. What would you yeah. say? So yeah. I, we'll take care of that for you. We'll, we'll put that cool. up, but uh, cool. Lee, congratulations uh, on Thank getting the show so up and um, for the performances on the October 3rd. That's fantastic. We're so excited. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for having us. Thank you. No problem. We were just speaking with Lee Mann, one half of the team who wrote Save the Girl, a 1980s rap rock musical comedy that will get its world premiere stage reading on October 3rd of 2022. Tune in next week as we'll be speaking with another guest or guests about their life, love, and passion. That is musical theater. I am your host as always, Jean-Paul Yovanoff. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.